Good morning and welcome. These are the readings and sermon for Sunday, April 18th. Let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. A reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is a reading of Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. Our second lesson this morning is a reading from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b to 48. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet, see that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, 
Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Robert Berenger, in the book 56 Lectionary Stories for Preaching, tells the following story. Mark Thomas and his wife Susan were excited by the opportunity to live in the Middle East for two years while on assignment for the Mobile Oil Company. The only drawback to their new home was the government restriction on Christians gathering for worship or study. Mark and Sue both missed their church and the experience of sharing Sunday worship together. As Easter Sunday approached that first year, Mark and Sue decided to risk inviting some of their Christian friends to gather in a basement room in their home. They soon found a number of other people who were willing to take the chance to gather for prayer and singing in spite of the risk they faced if discovered. The day arrived and Mark and Sue's friends began arriving sporadically so as not to attract the attention of the police. It was wonderful to be together, to listen to the story of that very first Easter morning and to sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. They were huddled together in a small basement room with no windows, but the joy they felt in their hearts was like being in a great cathedral with crowds of Easter worshipers proclaiming Jesus' resurrection. And then the sound of footsteps came and pounding on the door of the room where they were gathered. Suddenly, two officers and a detachment of police with guns drawn burst into the room. Quickly, the officers dispersed the group with warnings that if such a gathering occurred again, all present would be expelled from the country. The Christians left grateful that there had been at least some time to share their Easter faith and that there had been no arrests. Meanwhile, the two officers returned to the police station to file their report of the incident. They quickly discovered that their recollections as to who was the leader of the group and how many persons were there actually differed greatly. The senior officer insisted that Mark was the leader since the group met at his house, but the younger policeman insisted on the leader being a man who had stood in the shadows with a radiant look on his face. Nor did the two officers agree on the total number of men and women involved in the incident. The senior officer said, he had counted a total of nine persons, but the younger officer was just as insistent that he had counted ten people in the room. Unable to agree, the two policemen left the station with the intention of completing their report the following day. That night, the younger officer was going over the day's events in his mind when he fell asleep. In his dreams, the man with the radiant face, whom he remembered as the leader of the Christian group, spoke to him softly, saying, Where two or three are gathered, I am there in their midst. This powerful story teaches us at least two lessons about Easter. First of all, we learn from it that nothing in this world is able to stop the power and truth of Easter. No power in this world, no matter how many laws against Christianity, no matter how much persecution and hostility against Christians, none of this is able to stop Easter. 
The risen Christ is alive and present in the world today just as much as he was on that very first Easter day. His presence is even able to intrude into the lives of people who are not Christians, people like that younger police officer in the story. The risen Christ comes to bring light and life where there seems to be only death and darkness. The risen Christ in the world today is a power and presence that watches over God's faithful people like those Christians gathered in Mark and Sue's basement. This is wonderful news. The risen Christ is with us and the message of Easter can never be stopped. The second lesson we can learn from this story is also of great comfort and encouragement to us. Namely, the risen Christ is always present among the worshiping gathered community of two or more Christians. Christ is among us in and through the word and sacraments. Today's gospel lesson reaffirms this truth. One of the most interesting features of this gospel passage is that the risen Christ comes to his disciples when they are together and going through some pretty heavy grief. According to Luke, the disciples were really out of it. He says they were startled and terrified. They are frightened with doubts in their hearts, thinking that Jesus was a ghost. Jesus has to show them that he's not a ghost. He's a real, live, resurrected person with a physical body that they can touch. He can also eat. The risen Christ eats with his disciples at least three times. Earlier in Luke's gospel, we are told that he eats with the disciples at Emmaus. He also ate with them breakfast along the seashore in John's gospel. And now he eats with them again here in our gospel today. Now you would think that after seeing, hearing, and eating with the risen Christ the first time, the disciples would get it. But alas, they still seem to be clueless in our passage today, which causes me to wonder whether we're really any better than the disciples. Don't we often fail to get it too? Aren't we clueless sometimes so that, like the disciples, we also miss the importance of Christ among us? However, even in this, there's good news for us, just as there was for the first disciples. It does not, we notice, depend on the disciples in this passage to learn the importance of what's going on here when the risen Christ visits them. Jesus comes to the disciples and reveals himself to them as an act of love and grace on his part, not theirs. It is all Jesus' actions and words which make it possible for the disciples to wake up to the reality that the risen Christ is with them. In other words, God's love and grace are unconditional, unreserved, and freely given to the disciples and to us. It is not based on conditions of our worthiness or unworthiness. It is offered to the disciples and us when we gather around a table for food and friendship. Now, many scholars today believe these three meals Christ eats with his disciples after his resurrection may refer at least indirectly to the sacrament of Holy Communion. Eating and drinking is one of the clearest ways of experiencing and affirming Jesus' risen presence in the faith community and also of building up our relationships in the church. There is something about sharing a meal with another that draws us together as a community, while at the same time drawing us closer to God as well. Look at our ancestors in the faith. For example, Abraham and Sarah, completely unaware, entertain angels by sharing a meal with them. What happens? They are not only blessed with good company and conversation, they are also given God's blessing to all Israel and indeed to all humanity. Centuries later, Jesus provides for his church by giving us the sacrament of Holy Communion to feed us with his crucified and risen presence as we journey through this world. 
This sacrament is a foretaste for us of the great messianic banquet feast in heaven, which shall have no end. At that meal, all the faithful will sit down together from all nations and eat with our resurrected Lord. Until then, as the body of Christ, we are called to feed everyone who hungers and thirsts around the world. Through, the share, through sharing the meal and proclaiming the word, the first disciples were finally able to recognize the risen Christ among them. And the same is true for us today. The fourth century bishop of North Africa, St. Augustine, put it this way in an Easter sermon. He said, you are the body of Christ. In you and through you, the work of the incarnation must go forward. You are to be taken. You are to be blessed, broken, and distributed that you may be the means of grace and the vehicles of the eternal love. My friends, may we, like Mark and Sue, not be afraid to gather together to worship and serve the risen Christ regardless of any who would try to persecute us or stop us. May we celebrate Jesus' risen presence among us even in our most troubled times, knowing that he is always with us in and through his word and sacraments. And may we share the joyful good news of Jesus' resurrection with the whole world through our words and actions each day, for we are witnesses of these things. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forevermore. <laughs> Amen. My apologies. My dogs are acting up.